Elephant Man Podcast Network, Grown Man Conversations, dealing with elephants in the room. What's going on? What's going on? Good to hear from everybody. Good to see everybody. Uh, subscribe, like, share. Um, hit the notification bell. And every time a new video is out, then uh, you will be able to know. You'll be notified. You'll know to come into your, your phone. What's going on, man? Today, I want to just talk about uh, the the restoration of the Passover, the Pesach, the Passover. Now, I don't mean this people have to go and do the whole Passover Seder and, you know, different things like that. But this was one of the seven feasts of Yahuwah, one of the seven feasts of the Lord that we have totally got away from. Um, again, you don't have to go through the whole Seder. Pray about it. Um, those who are in the household of faith, pray about it and ask them how you can acknowledge it. But the Passover this year goes from uh, April 9th, which is today, to April the 16th. All right. So I'm going to read this this word about restoration. And it's crazy about that 2020, man. It's, everything is being restored. Everything is being pro- put back in proper place, man. You know what I'm saying? But the seven, before I get to that, the seven feasts of the Lord that that uh that we used to keep was the Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, but the Passover, um, the restoration of Passover. Let me let me go into the restoration of it. Like again, I'm not gonna go into the whole Seder. It's gonna be a quick video. I hope I got a few scriptures, and I'm getting off here. All right, a uh, restoration. What is? I had to look up the definition. What does restoration mean? And it's crazy what we going on with the CV19 thing and stuff like that. And it's crazy too because I was I was on the phone with my brothers. We was praying the, the night before, and then that next night it was almost like confirmation from another little brother, Marcus Rogers, and he was saying um, almost the same thing verbatim. I wish I could have taped this conversation and send it to him about the restoration of things. You know, things getting put back in order, things getting restored. Okay, um, Passover was for believers, we know that Yahushua, or Jesus the Christ, is the Passover lamb. And Passover was taken out, pretty much. We don't really acknowledge it. We don't really celebrate it because um, I, I guess a lot of times we think that we're under bondage or religious law or even things like that. But these seven feasts that I mentioned was told by Yahuwah that he told us to keep them and acknowledge them. And uh, we are saved by grace through faith through, your, through the blood of Yahushua. He's the Passover lamb. Matter of fact, it wasn't a coincidence that he died during the Passover time because he is a Passover lamb. And there's so many parallels and stuff. I don't want to get into all that today, but sometime during this two-week time, I'm going to go scripture for scripture and parallel parallel that. But the restoration, I had to look the definition up. The return to formal or original, to repair, to fix, the renewal, the reestablishment, all right? The return of the hereditary monarch, monarch, or regime to power, right? So when we uh, acknowledge him as being uh, he being the, the king upon our heart, then then we can be uh, we brush that, take all of them different idols off of our heart and off of our mind, and, and acknowledge him as being the king of our heart, right? The reinstatement, the now this is crazy, the reparation. <laughs> that was one of the definitions. The reparation. That's funny. He gonna take care of that. The, rec- the recuperation, recoup, right? All right. And so I'm going to read this John, uh, John 1 29. Let's go through that real, real quick. I got to go somewhere. I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. And, and John was like, the next day, John seen Yahushua, Jesus, uh, coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which take away the sins of the world. Now, that's real important when they say, Oh, Shalom, Lou take away the sins of the world because on the day of uh atonement um the uh we had every year that we would go up and they would have these uh different day of atonements or they used to call them yankapur they have dead atonements uh to take all of the sins of the nation and they would have the high priest go in and do different rituals and festivals and pray to yahuwah pray to god and um they would kill a lamb and uh it would uh cover up it would cover up the the uh the sins right it will cover up but this is crazy right here because it says it takes away he said uh john said uh john seeing jesus Yahushua said uh behold the lamb come to take away 
the sins of the world. So only thing about it is they will have this festival and they will feel real good about this the day of atonement. They'll feel real, real good about it. And then after a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months pass by, if you hear some screaming in the background, that's my kids playing the game. I try to close the door. They, they're nuts, right? But anyway, um, so um, he would, uh, after a couple of days, weeks, and months, they would start feeling some kind of way again, like, man, you know, the quote unquote sins would be building up, the, 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 the acknowledgement of sins would start building up again. And so then, then that, then the, the uh, atonement again will happen. Then they will have to cover up the sins for the whole, for the whole tribe again. But he said, he, this, uh, Yeshua came to take away. That means once and for all. That means once his blood shed on Calvary, you don't he don't have to uh, cover it up every year. He's the perfect lamb, and he takes away the sins of the world, right? Okay, and it said, uh, and I, uh, and John, okay, first, sorry, first John uh, uh, 32, and John bear record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove. He's not a dove, though, like a dove. He looks like a dove, <laughs> okay, and, and abode upon him, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same unto me, upon whom shall see the Spirit ascending and remaineth on him, the same which baptized with the with the Holy Ghost and with fire, right? And I saw him and bear record that this is the Son of Yahweh, Son of God. Again, the next day John stood and, and his two disciples, and looking upon Yahushua, uh, said, uh, he walked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they follow him. So not only did they acknowledge him that he was the Lamb of Yah, but it proved us in the pudding. Because a lot of times, folk be like, "Yeah, I, feel, I believe him. I'm, I, I acknowledge him." You know what I mean? That's easy. But 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 to lay down your life and follow him, that's a whole other different thing. He got the goods. He's the only one with the goods. You know what I mean? And so they let that lifestyle. They followed him with their life. So that's powerful right there. And uh, First Corinthians five seven through eight says Yahusha. Is our is our Passover sacrifice for us, right? Uh, Revelations twelve and eleven says we overcame a Satan, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, that's Yahushua Hamashiach, and by the word of their testimony, they love not their lives unto the death. That's a whole other different story, a whole other different day. I probably get more into that on um, Friday or either Saturday. But that restoration of the Passover, right? We like switched everything because we i guess a lot of times and i'm gonna keep it real in the in the uh in the in the church community we, we we got this thing between law and grace and we think that these seven feasts of the lord if you acknowledge them um during their times and stuff like that is is putting you back under the law and making you religious and all of that but you know what you know i'm finna go there but at the same time we'll be, we'll still do ishtar easter we still do christmas you know i was gonna go there it's Elephant Man podcast. We still put on all green and do uh 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 um St. Patrick's Day. You feel what I'm saying? We still uh put up uh loop do Lupercalia. I mean v- Valentine's Day. We still do all of those things, but but when it comes to these things, we just saying acknowledge them, right? We can't even follow them to the letter. They won't even make you clean. They won't even make you righteous. What he did make us righteous. He was shedding the blood. He did it all. We just got to believe and follow. It's that simple. It's really, really, really that simple. You know what I mean? We can't, we can't be perfect. It's not about us being perfect. Um, I'm gonna go into this uh, uh, thing about uh, King Josiah because this is very, 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 very important. Um, but before I go into that, I'm gonna give you a little story. I think it's going 13 minutes. All right, I ain't going into my story right now. I'm gonna share that story tomorrow. But let's go right into Second uh, Kings 22. See, because I'll be trying to do a little quick one, man, and then it end up being 20 minutes in our attention span. We got to go make a TikTok video. I'm just joking. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Josiah, King Josiah, okay, he reigned. He was one of the kings of Israel. He reigned for 31 years. He got on the throne when he was eight. And then when he was 18, he had a scribe named Shepan, right? And and Hilka. I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm not pronouncing it right. Hilka, the high priest. So Hilka, um, during the reign of uh, Josiah, Hilka went to uh, the temple and he found his book, found the book of the law, right? The things of, of God, right? 
uh, the things that God like, the things that God don't like, the things he approve of, the things he, he disapprove of, right? So he brought the, this book of the law to uh, Josiah, King Josiah, in 2 Kings 22 and 13. And so when King Josiah heard the book of the law, he was tripping. He was he, he ripped his clothes. He repented. He was like, oh, man, you know what I mean? He had an acknowledgement. He had an understanding. He had an understanding of uh, a whole other different understanding of Yahweh, but, but but it gets good, though. Okay? So the king said, go inquire of, 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 of God uh, for Judah concerning the words that's found in this book. So he said, man, go out, go meditate and pray. Go ask God. What's, what's going on? Because it was gone. It was hidden. This book, not, it was not out and visible before the people. So, and it said, uh, Yahweh said, Great wrath of the Lord, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book, do, nor do according to that was written. So, and right here, Yahweh, basically in a nutshell, is that Yahweh was mad. God the Father, he was mad. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm here to tell y'all, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is truly not bliss, right? Uh, it's, it's required that we that, that we uh, obey him and, and uh, follow him and trust and believe in him. Okay. Um, and they said they forsaken me and they burnt ancestors to other gods. So that was my question right here. Okay. Before Josiah got in there, it was other kings. My question is this. What was in place before this? Right. They had scribes, priests, high priests, prophets. They had all of those people there. Right. But right now, they're just not finding the book of the law. What God like, what God don't like, what God require, uh, and all of that, right? So what was they doing before that, right? They had these priests, scribes, high priests, prophetess, up in there with the gift of gab going off, saying all of this stuff, doing all of this, yeah, I say all this religious stuff, and they had a book of the law. So how do you know what to do? How do you know to follow if you don't have the the roadmap the guide the guide to what yahoo requires and what he don't so they was caught up on a tradition of men passed down from king solomon i know that sound cray cray they was followed off the tradition of men passed down and even if even if uh hilkiah wouldn't have found the book they would have still been following the tradition of men and still been in error there's a way that seems right into a man at the end there of his death right they would have still been they would have still uh been in that era, right? So then in uh first king or uh, second kings 23, it said, Read this book to all of the congregation. So now he gathered everybody together: the priests, the 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 peasants, the servants, every every the whole kingdom was there, and they read this book, and they were just like, Wow! So now it's a restoration of the requirements the restoration of the expectation upon the nation dang restoration expectation on the nation might have to get back in the booth it's a restoration of expectation to all of the nation okay that's crazy now you know right from wrong now you know discernment right and so the book of the law today is the scriptures right uh the 66 books you know you the 67th book right if you don't know that book you don't know right from wrong, right? You don't, I know that sound offensive to, to, to man that went to school and read a few books and got a few degrees and, you know, but if you don't know his ways, it don't really matter. Feel me? That don't really, so we need to be, us to be a restoration of his ways, a restoration of his thoughts, a restoration of what he like and what he don't like, right? And I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of the traditions, that we pass down and we celebrate faithfully every year. It has nothing to do with, with, with Yahweh. It has nothing to do with his kingdom. Now, I'm going to say you do you. I, I, ain't, I ain't hating on you. Do you. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying this stuff was passed down um, when we when they made Christianity a, a state religion. Constantine made Christianity a state religion. And then they let everybody come in. Everybody brought all of their stuff in, all of their idols or whatever. And they said, well, you can bring it. Just, just change the name of it to one of the saints or something. And so that's how Catholicism and, and a lot of different things. I don't want to get into that. Man, it's going to take me too long. But that's how a lot of that stuff got into place. Because when they made um, Christianity a state religion and wrong, 
you could bring all your stuff bring it come on just bring it all and so now that's why even today we got a lot of the things we do and we say and and we don't even know why we're doing that why are we cutting the uh jack-o-lantern and putting a candle in it and sitting it on our porch we don't even know why we doing all of that stuff you feel what i'm saying but i'm not gonna beat y'all up because i know y'all love it but it's a dead giveaway to me if the world embrace it there's got to be something wrong with it because <laughs> the world he said Yo, yahoo said uh the, the world hated me and they gonna hate you you know what i'm saying they ain't gonna hate me for sharing 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 the light and then here you come in my image and likeness and agreement with me and, and salt and light and, earth, and they love you you see what i'm saying so if they start loving you then that need they need you need to really check yourself for sure um I'm not saying they gotta gnash your teeth and you know at you all the time but they're not gonna love you and hate hate your king you know what i'm saying the chief you call him chief cornerstone you know what i'm saying that's a whole nother different level he is the chief cornerstone but we ain't getting into that right now so the book of the covenant was put back so everybody know now after the restoration all can see the discernment what's going on but then guess what happened it's in closer for real because i'm on 16 minutes dang this time goes so fast okay so it said uh bring out the vessels made for bail so guess what king solomon he had uh wives and concubines he had a thousand women king solomon loved women shlomo that's david's son uh he was he was wise man but god say you know i don't want you to mix with other it wasn't even nationalities how to, how uh racists uh pick, take it and say well don't mix the bloodline don't mix the blacks with the whites no that isn't what he's talking about you could be uh it's just one blood so you can uh, have a white wife or a white husband or black and white and all that he was talking about like don't mix like hindu and christian because it's going to be a confusion you know what i'm saying or oh, christian is something else it's like you are unequally yoked you know not throwing no shade but it is what it is so so he had all these different people so he had women that worship Baal, women that was sodomites women that worship molech they put their kids in the fire um women that uh that was zidonians women that worship kimosh women that women that worship milcom these are different gods and goddesses during that time okay so after they read the book of the law and they knew it, what, what Yahushua wanted what, what uh god wanted right they went and broke down all the vessels made to build and uh and the groves that was the trees you figure that one out and the host of heaven that's the angels because they worship heaven the uh the the angels incense burned the bell the sun moon and the planets then he broke down all of the um <clears throat> the things that was rose up to the sodomites the hanging groves they made they wove things and they hung them on the groves okay i don't know if that's an ornament or whatever the high priest uh okay wait i'm almost done all right and uh he took down the high places that king solomon built to the zidonians chemosh milcom all these different places now if they wouldn't have found this book in the law and closing they would have still been passing down traditions of men just like how we do today just pass down traditions of men i want to do that another okay do you bro i ain't hating on you but was they doing that in the early was they doing that in the early church you feel what i'm saying was the early early fathers doing that a lot of stuff we don't we, we we make it well we want to make it you know what i'm saying we just we do what we want to do you feel what i'm saying but it's it's suppressed and it's passed down you feel what i'm saying but in 2020 it's the restoration of all things it's the restoration of the kingdom of yahushua right it's the restoration of the people it's the restoration of all of that feel what i'm saying it's a restoration it's time out for all of that you say they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so it's time out for all of that goofy and then also look um this was a showdown the passover goes all the way back to egypt when we was in egypt the first time oh i got you didn't i egypt the first time and moses you know whole moses and pharaoh thing well y'all seen the cartoon and he would keep on saying let my people go let my people go that they may come out and worship me and, and pharaoh like no nah, man who's gonna build my chief cities i need these i need these people to build my chief cities no nah, man i ain't letting them go so they was going back and forth with the lice and the water turned to blood and uh, the frogs and uh, all this different thing he said i'm gonna do this last one he gonna let y'all go because it's gonna be so terrible 
I'm going to smite the firstborn of all Egypt. Not just the, not just the, the kids, but the firstborn of all the animals, firstborn of everything. I'm going to send the deaf angel in there. But what I want you to do is take a lamb. Uh, where is it at? Exodus 12 and 5. Take a lamb without no defects, right? Put the blood on the doorpost. Put the blood on the doorpost. Put it on the top of the doorpost and on the side of the doorpost. And when I see that blood, when my angel of death see that blood, he's going to pass over that house. Knowing not to come in that house and smite the firstborn of that house. So the angel of death, you know, that's what they did. They went out and they did it. And so the angel, of, uh, angel the, the the deaf angel came. He allowed the deaf angel to come through there. And uh, see, I don't even know how good Yahweh is, man. He said it rained on the just and the unjust. And we got wicked people all on, on Facebook talking crazy and putting up crazy memes. And, post, and he still, he, man, he, he still loves you. Because he might, he don't want no man to perish. He want all to come into repentance. He want all to come into him. That's how that's how good he is, man. But 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 in a second he gonna be like, nah, man. I mean, there's a point that man wants to die and then come to judgment. I know that's rough, and I know y'all want to hear. You know, everybody's different. This is what I'm called to do: Elephant Man Podcast Network, Grown Man Conversations, dealing with elephants in the room. So when he come through there, you see that blood on your doorpost. You see that blood of Yahusha, the Passover lamb. Jesus the Christ, he passes over. He passes over. Scripture says this, um, don't fear the man that can take your life. Fear the man that could take your life and your soul. Feel me? We got more uh, reverence and fear for men. What they going to say? What bishop and them going to say? Right? Or, or what What? What? Uh, the government going to say? What Uncle Sam going to say? Is they going to like me? Are they going to be, can I get a part of their group? Can I get a part of their clique? Man, we can't be worrying about what men say. We can't worry about what men say. We got to worry about what God say. Feel what he, at the end of the day. So even, and then the Passover, that was a, it was, they was on the inside of the house. What we doing? We quarantined inside the house. That's why I was amazed when um, we had prayed just the night before, me and my brother, and then Marcus Rogers got on there and said something to that same degree. And then uh, Brother Ryan, had shared it with me. I'm like, wow, man, it's in the same vein. That's that restoration of things, man. And so they was in the house. So I know we, like, man, we want to run back. We want to pack it out, and we want to just get the biggest offering in your hand. And man, okay, you are gonna get your money, chill, all right. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dogging the freak because I, I this trying to turn my head, not my heart. It's not about. I'm not dogging. I know we all want to get together. I'm not forsaking the assembly of the brother in the church when I said that. But a lot of time, man. We just been getting paid off that gift of gab, man. Gift of gab and no goods. And y'all will show me the gift of gab. It ain't. It's not working. You are gonna have to have the goods, the power, the relationship, the dunamis power. Not you, right? So you can show out, but we um do it. But you gotta be. Uh, he said, uh, when you humble yourself, then I will exalt you. So you gotta humble yourself, and then and you gotta be in covenant relationship with him. Then you have access to the weapons locker in the third heaven. That's a whole other different thing. Then you'll be able to go and walk in power. He said, man, you, you come in power. I'm not, I just didn't come in words, but I come in words and demonstration. That's what Paul said. He want that demonstration that's going to be be out, that saw light, that demonstration out here. Not the gift of gab. Still folk putting crazy memes all on there. And they don't know no better. I say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Uh, it's going to be a man. He's going to shake the dust off his feet. It's going to be on. He's going to separate the goat from the sheep. He gonna let, after a while, he ain't going to take that. He's going to let the wheat and the tear grow up. He's going to let Cain and Abel grow up, right? It's two different types of people in the world. What? Who, who, how are you? Who are you? Are you a sheep or are you a goat? Are you a wheat or are you a tear? Are you a Cain or are you a Abel? Who are you? Who are you for real? And so this whole thing right here, he's shaking it all up. A baphomet, that's a whole nother different thing. He's trying to get this uh, new world order going on, new world order. He wants to be in control of everything out of fear, intimidation, manipulation. We got this who's who all mixed up. You got people that's claiming something that they are not. You feel what I'm saying? It's stealing land, stealing people, stealing identities. All that's going to come to the surface. I ain't going to go into it because I want this video to go out. All that's gonna go to the surface. All that's gonna go to the, you got some urban apologetics getting on there, 
trying to throw folk under the bus. Truth gonna come out. Truth slow as a turtle. Truth ain't gotta run. Truth take his time. Tortoise in the hair. See what I'm saying? Truth slow. Truth ain't gotta rush. Truth ain't gotta add. Truth ain't gotta add or take away. Truth slow as a turtle. Break that finish line when it want to. Feel what I'm saying? So God, Yahweh was not slack concerning his promises, but he wanted all men coming to repentance. And so even right now, it's that restoration, that house, right? Even in the upper room. If you look at Acts, we in the upper room. He said, man, y'all go up in there until y'all do it with power. He didn't say go up in there until y'all got the gift of gab, say I'm coming up here and get an offering. No, he said to you and do it with power. Go on up in there together. Go on up in there. Then he looked, seeing we was on one accord, he sent his Ruach, HaKodesh, his spirit, right? It ain't got nothing to do with uh, your gift, your ability, your talent. You can, He could use it, but it ain't about you. It's about him. Sorry to tell you that, right? That American Idol, we ain't no American Idol spirit. Put a statue of me out in front. No, don't put no statue of me out in front. No, sir. <laughs> I'm straight. Don't name, don't, 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 don't put no, don't put my name on no church. So and so Bazell uh, Tabernacle. No, sir. Don't don't do that to me. You ain't set me up for the okie doke. Y'all can do that and play them different games. You know, and I love you, but I gotta tell you the truth, man. If you don't like it, then you could always unfriend me. Whatever. I'm just playing this. I know you better not unfriend me. But anyway, Elephant Man Podcast Network, Grown Men Conversation, dealing with elephants in the room. It's 26 minutes. And I didn't get to the, my other point. But I'm going to stop. Today is the first day of the Passover. Again, you don't have to pull out the Seder and all of that. Just pray about it. Remember, remember who the Passover lamb is, Yeshua HaMashiach. And if we, if we can't assemble on Sunday to do Ishtar and dye eggs and rabbits and Easter bunnies and all of that stuff we want to get back to so bad and mustard-colored suits and all that, ain't nothing wrong with that. Chill out. Don't hate. We're trying to get back to that so bad. Man. But we got to acknowledge him. We're going to restore that, that Passover. We're going to acknowledge him as the Passover lamb. That's what we're about to do. That's what it's about, man. That's what it's about in this end time. And I know they they they, 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 they probably infuriated right now for this video. So it's all good. What's going on, Tosh? Lou, Terry Lewis Sr., God bless you. Bill Coker down in Texas. Anybody else who, oh, Larry Ashley, LA, what's going on, man? Uh, I'm going to get off now. All right, one.